Hey, hey, hey! Happy Monday, gang! Welcome aboard, welcome back. It is Gen Con week. Yes, that's right, Gen Con begins this Thursday, and I am excited. And I will talk about that a little bit more on today's show. But let's get started, because the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer. I'm back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang, and actually sponsored today and tomorrow by Ulysses North America. And I will talk about them in just a moment and their big release, which is coming up at Gen Con. So today is Monday, July 30th. Welcome aboard if this is your first time joining me. Keep in mind, this is very, very casual. Just kicking back, talking a bit about uh, tabletop gaming, sometimes a little bit about geek culture, but mainly board games and RPGs and such. So this is a live stream. If you are watching live, keep in mind that chat is available. It is not on screen, but it is available through YouTube. And I do keep an eye on the chat, kind of off to the side. Sometimes people wonder why I kind of glance off to the side sometimes. It's usually because I'm taking a look at something in the chat window that popped up. But the reason I don't have it on screen is because it kind of helps keep some of the um, stranger commenters at bay. But of course, if you uh, have a question, you want to say hi, or I'm going to be taking a look at Smash Up the Bigger Geekier Box from Alterac Entertainment Group today. If you want to see something a little closer up, feel free to ask and I will respond. So got a bit of news today, not a ton of news today, but before I move into the news, let me talk about today's sponsor, Ulysses North America. And of course, you can visit their website at ulysses-usa.com. So if you are a role-playing game fan, then you would have to live under a rock not to know that Warhammer 40K Wrath and Glory is arriving at Gen Con. It is a Gen Con premiere this is a big, big title. I don't even think Ulysses understands how big this game is going to be just yet. I think they're excited. I think they they believe they're going to do some big numbers. But from what I'm hearing from Warhammer 40k fans, they are chomping at the bit to get their hands on this. Got to point out, unfortunately, you missed out on the pre-order. Rats, you just missed out by a day. Uh, in fact, I believe it ended a little earlier today, but there is plenty of information about Warhammer 40K Wrath and Glory at the Ulysses website. I am actually going to be talking to some of the folks behind not only uh, Wrath and Glory, but also the upcoming Torg, The Living Land, which uh, I really dig Torg, and they also have Fading Suns on the horizon too. I believe that's going to be coming to Kickstarter. So, by all means, if you want to learn more about Warhammer 40K, Wrath and Glory, either the core book, the starter set, or the different adventures and different uh, supplements, and also um, there's some dice and things like that, by all means, go visit Ulysses North America because they got some really cool stuff, and I am looking forward to getting my hands on Wrath and Glory at Gen Con. I believe I'm picking it up at Gen Con. I'm not positive because they may be sold out, <laughs> but I believe the gang over at Ulysses is going to hang on to a copy for me. But you never know. You just never know. All right, so let's hop on into the news because there was something that actually popped up earlier today. Pretty exciting because Gamelin Games has announced the latest title in their tiny epic lineup. I got to be honest, I knew about this back at Origins. I got to take a little bit of a peek at this kind of on the down low. But Game One Games has announced Tiny Epic Max. That's right. And I've got the dope on the game. Oh, yeah. It's the year 3030. Technology offers humankind unimaginable entertainment. I can imagine a lot of entertainment. 
What used to be virtual reality is now reality, and sports that once occupied your flat screen now occupy the world stage. The largest of them embodies the evolution and integration of athleticism and machinery. Once every five years, hundreds of millions of viewers tune in to witness the spectacle, uh, spectacle, duh, spectacle, that is mechs, mechanized entertainment combat heroes. Tiny Epic Mechs is an arena-style player-versus-player action programming game. It feature, features those item meeples with plastic molded power armors and a mech suit that the item meeples actually go inside of. In fact, you can see that in some of the images flashing on past. In Tiny Epic Mechs, players take on the roles of highly skilled and athletic mech pilots. They will compete in a free-for-all battle royale over the span of six rounds. In each of the six rounds, players will select four of eight available actions to perform. These actions keep you moving around the arena while allowing you to deploy high-scoring defensive turrets, planting explosive landmines with hidden values, collecting resources, purchasing weaponry, and powering up your power armor, or eventually the highly sought-after mech suit. While each player has their own power armor, there's only one mech suit reserved for the king of the hill. Your programmed actions are played out one at a time around the table until all players have executed their four actions. When you cross paths with another player, combat ensues. During combat, players exchange fire until one player is out of ammo and must retreat, or they are defeated and forced to reset. Combat is fast, and you'll only get to use each weapon one time per fight. So the more weapons you have, the longer you'll last. Weapons are categorized into three types. Each type counters one of the other types. If you time your weapons correctly, you can counter your opponent and unleash a more powerful attack and gain an edge over your opponent. Dealing a lot of damage to your opponent will wow the audience wow, and earn you a lot of points. More points will bring you closer to victory. You'll also score victory points every other round based on area control and who controls the mech. At the end of the game, you'll also get points for each weapon you own. Collect the most points and you'll win the game! Tiny Epic Mechs is going to be for 2-4 to four players ages 14 and up and will play in around 30 to 60 minutes. I have been told by Michael Coe that the game will be hitting Kickstarter on September 13th. Although, I must admit, I do not have any pricing information yet. Normally, the Gameland Games, Tiny Epic Games, will run about $20 to $30 as far as the pledge level to get your hands on the core game as well as any unlocked stretch goals. So very cool. I really dig the Tiny Epic line. Gotta be honest, I did play Tiny Epic Defenders. I thought it was I thought it was good. I thought it was fun, but it just didn't blow me away like the other Tiny Epic games I've played. So like uh, Tiny Epic Galaxies really dug that. Tiny Epic Western really dig that. So I'm gonna take a wild guess that uh, this is gonna be another big winner for Gameland Games when it hits Kickstarter in September. All right, if you like miniatures, then you'll be happy to know that last week, Wizards of the Coast announced they're going to release Guild Masters of Ravnica for Dungeons & Dragons. And this fall, WizKids is... Uh, WizKids? Jeez, my goodness, Jeff. Can't talk today. It's a Monday. Blah, blah, blah. I was actually watching uh, my niece and nephew last night, so uh, didn't get back home here until... Mm, about an hour ago, so kind of had to hurry up and get everything put together for this. <laughs> anyway, this fall, WizKids is going to jump on board Guild Masters of Ravnica with a brand new series of pre-painted figures, and I've got the dope. D&D Icons of the Realms line of pre-painted minis is going to have two starter sets, boosters, and a premium figure offer all scheduled for November. D&D Icons of the Realm's Guild Master's Guide to Ravnica will feature characters and creatures in the upcoming supplement book. In all, the set is going to include a total of 44 new figures, 
including the Death Pact Angel, the Gruul Anarch, the Boros Reckoner, and the Night Vale Spectre, as well as the Guildmasters of Ravnica themselves. Additional figures are going to be available in the randomly packed blind standard boosters, which will come with four figures, including one large and three medium or small figures. The standard boosters will be sold in a eight count brick for an MSRP of $127.92 or $15.99 per booster. Customers who pre-order a full case of booster bricks, which basically comes out to four bricks, so you're talking about over $500, will be eligible to purchase one case incentive figure, which depicts the Izzet Guildmaster Niv Mizzet. This larger size Red Dragon premium figure will carry an MSRP of $49.99, and will be available only while supplies last. I gotta say, I have seen a lot of these WizKids pre-paints. They always look really good. I would probably do some washes on them, maybe a little, little bit of dry brush to kind of bring out some of the details, make them pop a little more. But I have to admit, I always see these pre-paints and they look really good for pre-paints. That being said, I never liked the whole blind booster thing. And yes, I know it's a whiz kids thing, but, and I know if you buy a brick, which is the, uh, the $128 basically, that you're more than likely to get all the figures outside of course, the chase incentive of the red dragon, but still, I don't know. I, you know, I know it's a whiz kid thing. It's, and it's other companies too, the blind draw kind of blind boosters. Just what I, yeah, I don't know. But I gotta say, these look cool. And $15.99, $16 for a large figure and three medium or small minis. I mean, that's that's fine. Even though, you know, they're plastic, but they are pre-painted. So uh, I think that's a fair price. Okay, so staying in the realm of fantasy, one of the big releases that's gonna take place at Gen Con this Thursday is obviously going to be Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, and there is currently a pre-order available on Drive-Thru RPG. I've got a wee bit of the dope. Can't put it down, can you? You know what's in here. You've seen them, the most twisted ones, the arrogant ones, the lost ones. Oh, you'd like to walk away and life would be all cake and daisies, but you know you're going here instead. You'll try to convince yourself it's because you're greedy for the loot or can't resist a fight, but we all know the truth. So ready your sword, clean your pistol, and watch out for that dog. He might be small, but he's unreasonably vicious. Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay takes you back to the old world. Get the gang together, create your heroes or anti-heroes, and set off to make your way through the vile corruption, scheming plotters, and terrifying creatures intent on destruction. The 4th edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay rulebook contains everything you need for grim and perilous roleplaying adventures in the old world. The 352 page beta preview, that's what I'm calling it right now and I'll tell you why, of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th edition is available for $29.99 right now from Drive Through RPG. Do you want to also mention and I'll kind of detail this a little bit more. This is not part of the Christmas in July sale at drive through RPG, so it is $29.99. The reason why I call this kind of a beta preview is you can pre-order it, you can download the core book. There are some issues from what I hear through the grapevine uh, that need to be addressed. So um, I believe one of the character classes has the wrong info. It's got uh, like a duplicate uh, duplicate information from a different character class. I hear there's a few things that need to be cleaned up, but keep in mind, this is a PDF. We see PDFs get updated all the time from Cubicle 7 and everybody else. So if you place your order and you get the, um, like I said, I'm calling it kind of the, the beta, uh, of course, once it's a finished product, you will get that as well. And as I mentioned, it's, it's only a few things that need to be addressed. 
That being said, my understanding, and I might be wrong, but my understanding is that the actual physical book for Warhammer uh, Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition is going to release at Gen Con. I have had some people kind of asking me, you know, emailing, because they, they, they know I have a really good relationship with Cubicle 7, but sometimes they think that I have, like, some inside dope that <laughs> no one else has, and that's normally not the case. Uh, I have had some people asking, well, how are they going to be releasing the actual core book at Gen Con, but they still have these errors in the PDF? And I got to be honest, I think this PDF is not the most recent. I think because there was some backlash from fans because Warhammer was supposed to actually be out early this month, I believe this is just my thoughts. I, I do not know for certain, but I do believe that what Cubicle 7 did is they actually released this preview of the almost completed book just to, to kind of, you know, make the buyers happy so that they had something to take a look at, even though they knew and they point out that this is a work in progress right now. This is not the finished product. I got to say, I think this is going to be big. Uh, this is actually an RPG that uh, is on my top five that uh, are premiering at Gen Con this year. I think it is going to be super popular, and I know loads and loads of people are talking about it. So interestingly enough, there are going to be two role-playing games based on Games Workshop properties that are going to be big deals at Gen Con this year. That is unusual, to say the least. All right, sticking in the realm of role-playing games, now available from Chaosium Inc. is the RuneQuest Glorantha Bestiary, which includes a slew of creepy crawlies and monstrous maliciousness to include in your RuneQuest adventures. And I've got the dope from Chaosium. A myriad of foes, rivals, and allies to challenge your RuneQuest heroes. The RuneQuest Glorantha Bestiary contains almost 200 creatures native to the world of Glorantha, or in the spirit worlds adjacent to it. These creatures range from weak to <laughs> apocalyptically powerful. I hate apocalyptically powerful monsters. Allowing a RuneQuest game master to choose the right creature to suit any encounter or need. Entries are divided into elder races, creatures of chaos, monsters, natural animals, dinosaurs, giant or unusual insects, spirit entities, summoned magical beings, and noteworthy plant types. Another chapter, Terrors, describes the most horrific and powerful entities walking the world of Glorantha, such as the enormous Crimson Bat, the three-bodied Chaos Horror Quim. <clears throat> I swear that's how I'm pronouncing it. Uh, <clears throat> moving right along. The Chaos Gaggle and the Fiend of Cacodemon. Each entry is presented in the same format as player adventurers, including attributes, kit locations and armor, weapons and special attacks, skills, languages, magic, and more. Sections in each entry include myths and history, subtypes, description, culture, government, religion, region of origin, and more, with adventuring races expanded in considerable detail. You can let your players be trolls, centaurs, or different intelligent races. Non-human species detail for use as player character adventurers, ranging from multiple types of elves, dwarves, centaurs, dark trolls, and great trolls, all the way to unique Gloranthan species such as intelligent baboons and ducks. Yes, there are the intelligent ducks <laughs> in RuneQuest. Some people hate it. I don't mind. I, th I think it's kind of cool. I got to be honest. I think, I think the intelligent ducks are kind of cool. Dragon Newt's Minute and a Half, Trollkin, and Wolf Brothers, complete with their professions, cults, and magic. The 208-page RuneQuest Glorantha B-Series is available right now in PDF from DriveThruRPG for $19.99. I've said it before, I will say it again. If anyone out there is looking for a sort of Bronze Age fantasy setting that's not real, it's not super high magic. There is magic, 
but not like real high fantasy. More realistic, more gritty, combat that's quick and deadly. You can do no wrong picking up RuneQuest. And I have had a chance, I have not seen the bestiary, I'll be the first to admit, but I have had a chance to kind of flip through the PDF for the new edition of RuneQuest, and it is good. It is mighty good, folks, from what I have seen. Uh, I'm certainly not ready to do any sort of a review of it, but uh, I swear, just the setting alone, Greg Stafford has invested 40-some years into the Glorantha setting, and it shows. It is probably one of the most detailed game settings that you'll ever encounter, and I, I'm including all the stuff from Dungeons and Dragons, Forgotten Realms, and uh, Dragonlance, all that stuff. I'm telling you, I think Glorantha tops them all. So, definitely worth taking a peek at. Now, I do want to point out, also, this is not a title that is part of the Christmas in July sale at Drive-Thru RPG, unfortunately. But, I do want to mention, you still have two days. You've got today and tomorrow to take advantage of the Christmas in July sale at Drive-Thru. And, you'll save 25% on over 50,000 products in PDF, be it core books, adventures, supplements, maps, you name it, it is there. So unfortunately, the, some of the newer stuff is not part of the sale. I have seen some other newer stuff that is part of the sale. And as always, when I'm talking about drive through RPG, please do me a favor. If you are heading over to one of the drive through sites, swing over to thegaminggang.com first, click on one of our banners. If you do happen to make a purchase, we get a small portion of that. And no joke, that all really adds up and it really helps keep the gaming gang around because on most most months, pays for our hosting and we do not have inexpensive hosting. No, you don't pull in a few million visitors a year and uh, get by on like GoDaddy $5 a month hosting. <laughs> okay, before I jump into Smash Up, the bigger, geekier box, do want to mention if you are Marvel fans out there and you enjoy Deadpool and Deadpool 2, I'm going to have a giveaway coming up. It is going to be next week. Pro if I have a show on Monday, I will announce it on Monday. Uh, if I don't have a show, because I'm going to be coming back from Gen Con, I'm probably going to be pretty beat because it's still kind of up in the air. If, if I'm doing it solo all, all four days or I got help coming in i don't know i have no idea but just so you know on august 6th i am going to announce be it on twitter oh well it'll be on twitter don't worry <laughs> so if you're a follower on twitter you'll know but i'm gonna have a giveaway that's right i'm gonna have a giveaway and the giveaway is going to include digital downloads of deadpool as well as deadpool 2 the super duper cut and i do want to point out this isn't a giveaway where I'm just giving like one copy away or 10 copies away. I've got a lot of copies to give out. Now I can't give it out to every follower or every subscriber. So I will come up with some sort of like real easy sort of contest to, uh, to I mean like a retweet or something like that. Just super, super easy. So uh, I will have giveaway codes to, uh, to share. So that was pretty cool. I got that uh, at San Diego Comic-Con when I was doing some uh, some coverage of uh, the Deadpool 2 uh, suite that they did at the Hard Rock Cafe that was closed to the public. It was only by invitation only for the media and uh, we got up there and it was, it was pretty wild. It was pretty wild. And uh, I will go into a little bit more of that detail for the giveaway as it gets closer. But just want to point out, if you're a Deadpool fan, I got a giveaway for you. Sweet. All right. So I know folks are tuning in because they want to check out Smash Up, the bigger, geekier box from Alderac Entertainment Group. This is brand new. This is not out yet. So this is going to be hitting retailers on August 15th. If you are at Gen Con, you should be able to pick it up at Gen Con. I am 99.9% .9 positive that AEG will have this available. So in the bigger geekier box we're gonna see a comprehensive rule book 
plenty of space for an insane number of smash up expansions because there are an insane number of smash up expansions and factions. There are also two new factions as well, the Geeks and the All-Stars. And as I mentioned, this will be available at your friendly local game store or favorite online retailer on August 15th or pick it up at Gen Con while it's there and it will carry an MSRP of $39.95. So let's swing on over to the other camera. This is another monster size box. So uh, I did not want to put the camera way, way up uh, simply to get the box in. But do that. Now, give you an idea. There's the size of my hand. And I don't have tiny hands. I don't have huge hands, but I do not have tiny hands. So if you happen to have Thunderstone Quest, then you know the exact size of this box because this is the same size box as what came for Thunderstone Quest. Now, of course, this does not weigh 16 pounds like Thunderstone Quest did, but uh, it's, uh, it's still meaty. So, of course, we do know a lot of this is going to be devoted to storage. I'm really curious to see what's cooking with the rule book because I understand the rule book is supposed to be very comprehensive and it does include loads and loads of cards as far as uh, kind of uh, almost like FAQs with a lot of the cards. So let's uh, let's get this open here. I like that. We're gonna need a bigger box. We're gonna need a bigger boat. All right, we'll get the shrink off of that. I dig how, of course, it's got all the different artwork from all the various different expansions that have come out for Smash Up. And Smash Up is a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. I was surprised how much I enjoyed it. And the funny thing is, I got a lot of Smash Up uh, expansions, but I do not have all these Smash Up expansions by any stretch. In fact, uh, when I get back from Gen Con, I'm going to take a look at, uh, I'm going to crack open the Oops, You Did It Again expansion. So, all right. So, we've got the, uh, the tray that we've had before. Uh, actually, yeah, this is full size. So we had a lift out tray for uh, Thunderstone Quest as well. So we had a, a nice lift out tray. We've got, uh, this is for various tokens. So you've got that. Uh, this is just an open area. You can toss in a bunch of different stuff. And then just as we had with the Thunderstone Quest, we've got all this storage space in here plus the styrofoam blocks so that you can uh, kind of squeeze in. Yeah, well, for one, to it's they're mainly there so you can put them in so they don't uh, move all over the place. So here it looks like we have dividers for everything that has come out to this point. Pretty wild. But before we start diving into these, let me grab a quick sip and let's take a look at that rule book. Because Smash Up is not a difficult game to get into, but as more and more expansions would come out, there uh, there have been some cards that uh, some people were like, um, hmm, how does how does that card work? So it says Smash Up Comprehensive Rule Book for now. <laughs> for now. All right, so let's see what we've got here. So, least funny smash up rule book ever. The expanding universe, how to use the book. There we go. We're sh showing all the various, is that all of them? I don't know if that's all. I don't think that's all of the expansions. I think there's more. They may just be the ones that are still available. And there's the, uh, oops, I did it again. Or oops, you did it again. So, talking about knowing the cards. Talking about the minions, actions, bases. Madness, Titan, actions with power, treasures, monsters. The game has evolved since it first uh, arrived on the scene. So, it's 
That's one cool thing about Smash Up is that it's not just the same exact thing, just with different. Uh oh, what's going on? Smokey's making some noise for a change down here. She's usually pretty quiet. Uh, there have been um, some some changes to the game, uh, to, so it's not just the same exact thing with uh, just new factions tossed at it. So we've got the setup, the big score, game over, man. Special cards, counters, and rules. The Madness deck. Monsters and treasures. Monsters and bases. Titans. Burying, duels, terms, and phrases. Talking about the various different keywords on the various different cards. Detailed rules for cards, abilities, and other wackiness. Conflicting text and timing. Rule changes and errata. We've got that. Talking about aliens, dinosaurs, bear cavalry, elder things, giant ants, Innsmouth, minions of Cthulhu, mythic horses, <laughs> time travelers. So it's actually going through... And uh, talking about the rules change, rule changes for the various different cards from the different expansions. So just uh, a few of them that they've kind of tweaked the rules on. Talking about card clarifications. Showing each of the factions. If you're not familiar with Smash Up, which honestly, why would you be watching this if you have no idea what Smash Up is? It's, uh, you're simply taking two 20-card decks. Each 20-card deck represents a faction. So you take two factions, you mash them together. That's the smash up, right? You get the two different factions in your deck, and you're fighting other players with their two factions that are smashed up together too. And uh, you're basically trying to take each other's bases. So we got more of these... Just talking about all of the various different, just about every faction there. And we got special minions and actions by type. Talking about the bases by name. <laughs> faction files. So yes, the cowboys are in Oops, You Did It Again. Kung Fu Fighters, Mad Scientists, Minions of Cthulhu. I love how it was the obligatory Cthulhu set when that one came out. That was one of the that was one of the first expansions, if I remember correctly. Thieves, Time Travelers, Zombies, more factions. And then a cross-reference sorted by factions. And it looks like uh, pretty much, yep, yeah, looks like they're talking about each of the factions and what expansion those came in. All right, so we've got the rulebook there. Rulebook clocks in 32 pages. But really, if you think about it, the rules are all of about six pages, uh, maybe eight, depending on which cards you're using, which expansion you're using with the core set so not a difficult game to get into but amazingly enough the game has more meat on its bones than you might expect but uh like i said i i enjoy smash up i like it uh my nephew cameron digs it so do his friends so we've been playing that a little bit all right so we got all these dividers and i'm not going to look at every single divider here all right let's pop this on open but just kind of give you an idea. I mean, look at all of these. Wow, and these are actually, these are plastic. These dividers are plastic. That is super nice. Wow, I wish they had done, <laughs> done this with Thunderstone Quest. Not that I have any problems with Thunderstone Quest. I love it, but Man, that is really nice. I really like these plastic dividers. So we got rock stars, 
We've got uh, Teddy Bears. We've got uh, Mega Troopers. Itty Critters. Kaiju. Disco Dancers. That's from that uh, 70s expansion. So are the Kung Fu Fighters. Oh, hey, not even paying attention. Right there on the bottom, it's going to tell you what expansion. So we got the Truckers, the Vigilantes. I love the Clint Eastwood Dirty Harry right there. Uh, so then we've got the Geeks from the bigger, geekier box. And then the Smash Up All Stars from the bigger, geekier box. Like I said, I really, really dig these dividers. Really nice. Very, very cool. So we got for bases. Oops, you did it again with the mummies, the cowboys, the samurai, and the Vikings. Yes, I know. Everybody was amazed that Vikings had not made it into Smash Up. So loads and loads. That's, this just shows you how many expansions, how many factions there actually are out there. Super Spies. That is a... Uh, that's a, not, not a bad likeness as far as um, Sean Connery is Bond. So, all right. So we've got those. And then we've got two new factions. Put these in here. Just so I don't have to move all those dividers back over here. So let's get these open. Because... We've got, these are uh, the Geeks and the All-Stars. So I'm wondering if the All-Stars are some of um, some of people's favorite cards from past expansions, or if this is a brand new faction. So we've got, let's see, so we got, this is a base card. These are two bases. So, Tabletop. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Will Wheaton. Forgot to mention, Will. I think Will Wheaton's like the geek. And then we've got the con. So, Geek and Sundry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not that I have a problem with that. I'm just, I'm just joking. Um, so, we've got that. Because, remember, I was at the Nerdist parties all through San Diego Comic-Con. And, uh... Geek and Sundry is part of uh, Legendary. So I'm not positive that they're part of Nerdist, but I believe Legendary does own uh, Geek and Sundry. Or, you know, they're partnered with them, whatever, parent company, whatever. So Servitor of Cthulhu, Fan, Sprout, Ensign, Puck. It's like a like a basketball kind of theme in here. Lab Assistant, Imperial Dragon. I don't even know if that... G-E-I-F, something like that. <laughs> Granny. Granny's taking it to the hoop. King Rex. King Rex has no actual, like, talent, so... Uh, seeing stars action, begin the summoning action, it's astounding, full moon, <laughs> non-infinite loop. Okay, so this is kind of a bizarre, uh, kind of like all-star basketball weirdness, ghostly arrival, square deal, In favor of Dionysus, uh, yeah, is it Dionysus? I forget. It's a Greek god. Uh, prepare for battle. Okay, and then we've got a locker room. It's got a locker room base. And stadium base. All right, now it looks like we got the geeks. So I'm going to take a stab that these are probably people associated with Geek and Sundry. So I don't know. I mean, go on. I, I tell people all the time, I do not consider any of this stuff like competition. Uh, I am not a competitor. I mean, by any stretch, really. 
of like Geek and Sundry or Dice Tower or anything like that, right? I don't look at it that way. I know some people out there who, you know, run their own websites and shows and gaming networks and things like that look at me as a competitor, but I'm like, you know, everybody's got a different style, different technique. So I, me, I'm kind of like the more the merrier. As long as you're, you know, providing interesting and unique views, hell yeah, the more the merrier. All right, so we got fans. We got uh, game guru. Kind of recycling a lot of art here. Uh, Will Wheaton, Felicia Day, Force of Will, Rules Lawyer. Yeah, there you go. Cosplay, min maxing. Yeah, so this is all this is all like tabletop related for the show. Banana list. Oh wait, so uh, that almost looks like Todd, Todd Roland on the right there. Wonder if that's supposed to be Todd. I think so. So we got those Mulligan and. Uh, the hell does that say? Griefer? Yeah, so maybe it's Griefer. I don't know. But no, yeah. All right. So these are the two new factions. We've got the Geeks and the All Stars. We got some bases as well, and we got these really cool plastic dividers. Uh, I would love to see AEG come out with the plastic dividers for. Uh, for Thunderstone Quest, that would be awesome. But I gotta admit, that's this is a lot of dividers. There are more dividers than this in Thunderstone Quest. All right, so we got the two new factions. We got the dividers. We've got the pullout tray here that uh, you can put tokens in that. Uh, here you might uh, you would maybe you know there's a lot of different stuff from. Uh, all the various different expansions of that, but you could probably even put like your favorite faction decks here right on top so you could pull them out right away. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the 32 page comprehensive rule book, which looks like they've done a really, really nice job on. All right, and that is what we find when we crack open the bigger, geekier box. First smash up from Alderac Entertainment Group. So, as I had previously mentioned, this is not out in stores just yet. It is coming out. It will be in stores on August 15th. You can get it from your friendly local gaming store, or of course, you can always go to your favorite online retailer. If you are going to be at Gen Con, as I mentioned, I am about 99% positive that they will have some available there for sale. May not have them all four days, but I would take a guess if you walk in the door first thing on Thursday, they will have it. Anyway, it does carry an MSRP of $39.95. So, all right, a bit shorter show than usual, um, simply because, I mean, we're just looking at a rule book and some faction cards uh, as far as the bigger, geekier box. So, I do want to mention few different things on tomorrow's show i'm i'm taking a look i'm up in the year honestly i'm up in the year between actually reviewing warsaw city of ruins from north star games did finally get a couple more plays of it uh over the weekend in fact last night really um so uh i am ready to review it give you a hint i liked it in fact, I, I was surprised at how much I like it. So there's a little bit of a hint. So I'm up there between doing a review of that or actually taking some time and talking about the, the five RPGs that I am really, really looking forward to getting a closer look at at Gen Con that are releasing at Gen Con. And one of them is not the Pathfinder 2.0 playtest. Not that I'm not interested in taking a look at it. It's just... It's a playtest release. It's not going to be the finished product. But there are some, including Wrath and Glory, the Warhammer 40K role-playing game from today's sponsor, Ulysses North America, that I am pumped to take a look at, as well as Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 
The Expanse from Green Ronin. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm up in the air. It depends on if I can pull enough info, enough good in-depth info about these RPGs. Because sometimes, like for an example, Vampire the Masquerade, uh, the fifth edition of that, there's not much floating around out there about it. Um, and I've talked about that a little bit uh, over the past few weeks, how I think it's going to divide fans of the game. But uh, there isn't a whole lot out there, so it's not unusual for some role-playing games that are coming out at Gen Con to not have a ton of info. So, all depends. I'm kind of up in the air. But I will have a show tomorrow, so that's important. Uh, I will not have a show after that for the rest of the week, So because I will be out in Indianapolis. I'm actually going to leave probably late Wednesday morning, early Wednesday afternoon to go to Indy for Gen Con, and I'm pumped. Gotta be honest, out of all the conventions that I pop out to every year, Gen Con's my favorite. Never fail to have a good time. So, and I love the people there. I love getting to catch up with a lot of my friends in the industry. And uh, everybody always gets along. Not that I see fights break out at other conventions, but everybody just is so happy to be having a great time. So I am pumped. I'm excited. All right, so that is it for today's show. Do want to point out when you're not watching the Daily Dope or watching another video from the Gaming Gang, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. I will be back tomorrow. So until then, enjoy the rest of your Monday. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, Thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.